Hi, my name's Velvet Curse and welcome to Let's Play Niche. So last time we had Adam found his mate Eve and they had their first babies which were surprisingly twins. So we've got to move on to the next day now so that the twins can grow up slightly and get out of the nest so that they can start helping out inside the pack. So let's move on to the next day and they now have one little gem each so they're not really able to do much at the moment the best that they can do is just move out of the nest but that does leave the nest free for the mother eve to continue on with her breeding once she's got a free nest so we'll move Izanako down here onto the shoreline um, We'll have a little look. She's actually got two running legs, so she might not be that good at picking up the nuts like her mother. Um, and Coco also has two running legs, so we've got nobody passed on with the nimble fingers at the moment. So it might just be Eve that's going to collect the nuts um, for now. But we'll just... Oh, because she moved out of the nest, we can now see into this little patch of grass, which actually shows us that there is a permanent nest over here. So should we need a second nest later on, or the non-permanent nests that we make do eventually wither away and become unusable so we will have to either create a new nest or move out of that one after a little bit of time so that might be useful a little bit later on so for now we'll have eve pick up the nuts that she can reach from where she sat that bunny's still scampering around over there so we might have to have adam have a little look at that but since the twins were both female i'd really like to get a male baby out of the two of them as well so if we breed them again and there we go eve is again pregnant which actually leaves adam with all of his turns the bunny's not really gotten close enough for him to do much about it just yet so if we pick up a couple of berries the bunny's not really moving anywhere it probably doesn't want to get closer to adam he's got the big body and the fangs he probably looks quite scary so we'll just pick up the berries for now and then we'll move him one step closer to the bunny so that hopefully we might be able to get it on the next turn so if we have a little look around there doesn't seem to be much on the shoreline yet that we can see but obviously the dark tiles we don't know what's going on but on those and there could be things spawning in the grass for all we know we probably don't want to stay on this island too long because it isn't very big and we've not got that much food but for now just while we start our little family off it's okay so we'll skip to the next day and see what eve's next baby is going to look like oh and it is a little boy so let's have a look. Dooku. So Dooku actually does have the nimble fingers like his mother, which is good. He'll be able to help her pick those nuts up if need be. Unfortunately, he does have the short-sighted eyes in his um, inactive traits as well, but I'm sure we'll be able to breed those out a little bit later on. He's also got the spiky body, so he doesn't get any tail like one of his sisters, but he's got immunity gene A and the home immunity gene so he actually can't breed with either of his sisters because they've both got a and g so we don't want him to mix with the a gene with his a gene because they could have sickly children so inbreeding is not necessarily a big deal in this apart from we don't want too many of um, the immunity genes to show up on the same creature so we wouldn't want him to mix with either of his sisters at the moment because all three of them have the a gene but if we have different genes later on we might be able to breed him with one of his sisters that doesn't match up with him because that's that's okay to do they wouldn't get sick from that so if we move Izanako up here where her father was sat so that she can start picking the berries for us and then Adam should be able to scoot a little bit further over start getting some of the grass and uncovering more of the island for us possibly get that bunny a little bit later on but it seems to have moved for now so coco can get rid of the grass oh there's the bunny coco can get rid of the grass over here and start picking up some berries from this bush which gives a little little bit of extra food now i don't like to have all of the babies be exactly the same age so now we've got two females and a male i will give adam and eve a little rest from producing um babies but we don't want to give them too much of a rest because if you notice this bar down here this is their lifespan so 
Eve is actually 14 days old and has a remaining lifespan of seven days, so we can use a couple of her days to do different things, but we do want her to have more babies very shortly. So if we move Eve over here and get rid of some of this grass so that we can see a little bit more, I believe that is the bunny burrow down there, so that's where the bunny is coming from. So all of our creatures are out of energy for the time being, so we'll skip the day. And the more nuts have fallen down, so if we use Eve to get rid of a little bit more of this grass... Oh, there's two bunnies over here now, so we might bring Adam or possibly his son over here to do a little bit of bunny hunting in a moment. So we'll collect more food with Izanarko so that we don't run out of food because we now have five creatures so we're taking up five food per turn so we need to make absolutely certain we're picking up more than that if at all possible. We'll move a little Dooku out of the nest so that if Eve should want to use it she is able to and then we'll use Coco to pick from this bush again and she probably can't pick this acorn up but we'll try, no she wasn't able to but we can move Adam up here to get rid of more of this grass so that we can actually see most of the island at this point but Adam should be able to go bunny hunting shortly but I would like him to breed with Eve another time so that she can get back to the nest and have another baby before we do that so skipping on to the next day again and more acorns are falling down obviously Eve needs to be the one to pick those up so again we will use Izanarko to pick up some of these berries from these bushes and see the nest has now gone dark brown so we could either move back to the nest and regenerate it but that would cost us extra twigs or we can swipe at it which destroys the nest but gives us some of the materials that we used back but not all so we'll do that for now just so that we can get more of the grass back because we've got this permanent nest now so it's okay for us to not have that temporary nest and then we'll use little Dooku to pick up some of the nuts so that we've got more food now if we have Eve move over to Adam so that they can breed she can actually make it all the way back to this nest because she's quite quick so we'll do that with her so that she can have another baby next turn because we don't we don't want the babies all to be too close together because then they'd all die at the same time but we also don't want them to be too far apart and us not be, be breeding the genes back into the gene pool because we have to have quite a few creatures to be able to carry on with the tribe especially once we move up here and go to the other island so we will use Coco to pick up the berries from this nest and then that leaves Adam, he can actually see where the bunny is. So if he moves directly on top of the bunny, they can only hop one space per turn, so he can now swipe at that bunny, and he manages to get it, and we can pick up all of the food from that bunny, which gives us a decent amount of food, actually. So little Coco has an extra turn, so we will dig for roots. She doesn't have any digging paws, so she's probably not going to be able to manage it. But if we actually look inside the genetics menu, all of these locked genes require us to do something. So, water body requires us to swim 50 times, and toxic body requires us to collect from toxic berry bushes, and stinky body requires us, sorry, spiky body requires us to attack 30 times, different things like that. So, sometimes, even if we can't actually manage to do something with a creature we want to do it regardless of that fact because that will actually count towards this um, total to unlocking the genes regardless of whether the animal actually succeeds or not so I'm not sure if there is a gene um, that requires us to dig possibly digging poor if I can find that on here somewhere um, digging pod does require us to dig 50 times so Coco if she digs even though she's probably not going to be able to perform the dig action and she couldn't but that will still give us one towards that gene so if we look back in here now the digging paw now has one out of 50 so it wasn't a completely wasted turn because she's got us towards more genetics and our mutation menu that we can actually use so if we now skip the day to see Adam and Eve's new baby, 
it is another little girl and the twins have actually grown up so they can now find mates of their own if we can get them which the best thing for us to do is go to a new island and see if we can pick up some roaming creatures so that they hopefully have completely different immunity genes to what we currently have in our tribe but it has just started to rain so the best thing for us to do is stick around for a little bit and pick up all this renewed food because of the rain and then we'll move on after it's finished raining so Lakome. so they have another daughter she doesn't have the um, short-sighted eyes which is good and she still has the poisoned fangs in her recessive genes which is also good she again has a gene and the home island immunity gene so she again cannot breed with her brother but that's all right because we might pick up a roaming female instead of a roaming male and he may be able to breed with them instead so we've got a um, third daughter she again has spiky body so we might want to breed a little bit of that out a bit later on because we don't want spiky body to completely take over but for now that's absolutely fine and she also carries um, the pretty ram horns that her mother has unfortunately none of the babies have actually inherited the ram horns but that'll be all right for now so i think that's the last um, baby that we want Adam and Eve to have on this particular island because we want to move on but um, Eve can just protect her baby for a short time while she picks up some of this food and then we will have Coco attempt to dig again so that we get a couple points towards dig and Izanarko can pick up a lot of these berries so that we don't waste the food that's given to us by the rain and Dooku can pick up the acorns and more of the berries that his sister wasn't able to get. Adam can move over here, yes there is that other bunny. So Adam can get the other bunny and we can't pick up that meat right now because he's, he's used up all of his turns. But that's okay because it doesn't rot away or anything like that. So it will just sit there and allow us to uh, pick it up next turn. So we'll skip to our next turn and our little um, Lakome will grow up a little bit more and be able to scoot out of the nest. So she hopefully should be quick enough. Um, oh, she doesn't have a lot of speed right now because she's a baby, but she is going to have four speed. So she should be able to get over here to uh, the portals next turn as well once she's not so small. So if we start moving, we'll have um, Dooku pick up the acorn first and then move him close to the portals and we'll have Izanarko pick up twice from the berry bushes so that we're not completely wasting the food actually three times because she's quite fast so she'll be able to get there uh, completely on the next turn and then Adam can pick up all of that meat and then Adam can move down to the portals how many portals do we have? We actually don't have um, that many portals, so if we spin this a little bit, we only have one, two, three, four. We have five portals um, and six creatures, so one of our creatures is not going to be able to come with us to the next island, which is quite sad. So we have to decide who we're going to leave behind. Um, These two are quite similar, they both have the spiky body, they have, both have the poison fangs in their recessive, they both have a little bit of similar genes, one has G, one has the home island immunity. Um, I think personally it would be sad to split the twins up, so I think maybe we will take um, Coco over Lakome onto our next island, um, there doesn't the only thing with that is Coco actually carries the short-sighted eyes, whereas Lakome doesn't carry them. But I think we should be able to breathe that out pretty easily, so that shouldn't be much of a problem. They both do carry the ram horns. Um, they carry different tail genes, but we haven't decided wh where we want to go with those yet, so that shouldn't be that big of an issue. So actually, maybe Eve shouldn't have had that last baby on the island, but accidents happen sometimes so let's move Coco up here so that she's ready to carry on and then we can move Eve up because we definitely want to take Eve with us and 
Eve can actually breed with Adam so that she can go to the next island already pregnant. It doesn't do them any harm to stay pregnant for a couple of turns if they haven't got a nest. So if we use her last unused slot to make her pregnant so that she can actually carry on to the next island pregnant and then we won't feel so bad about leaving little Lakome behind but we skip to the next turn so that all of our creatures have all of their energy back and little Lakome um, can chase this bunny around. There's a mole so she could have swiped at that mole if she wasn't um, already out of turns but I'm sure she'll get used to the moles um, being here. We are actually leaving her by herself which is um, quite sad but there's not a lot I can do about it because you can only take as many creatures as there actually is teleports so if we move on to the next island and say goodbye to her I'm sure she'll be able to find a nice life on this island and there are the stepping stones so other creatures might be able to come back and forth and um, see her later on so we will move to the next island and hopefully yes it is a much bigger island so as we can see we can now go um, left or right if we want to carry on from one island to the next but for now we will just stick around and explore this island a little bit more see if we can find some wandering creatures hopefully not too many predators so if we start off with eve because she is the closest to the grass and we can have a little sniff and a little listen around and there doesn't seem to be anything um, directly in this grass so we won't worry too much about it so if we pick up some of this food that we can see because we don't want to run out of food and then she can clear a little bit of the grass so that we can start mating, making headway into this territory so then Coco can be a little bit more adventurous because she's got the spiky body and um, she's um, a little bit younger than her mother so I'm sure she would want to go out and she's also looking for a mate of her own so her sister will follow her out into the grass a little bit and we can uncover more of this grass and see what's around here not a lot yet um, we do actually have enough grass for Eve to make a nest next turn now but we might want to see if we can find a permanent nest for her um, before we do that because there might be one quite close to the ports there quite often is and Dooku has now managed to grow up completely so he's a bit slower than um, his sister but he does as we said before have the nimble fingers so if we move him over here close to the tree and then he should be able to pick up any nuts that fall from that tree and we can remove that bit of grass as well so we can actually see him and he's not swamped so if we skip the next to the next day and there is a nut that's um, fallen right next to him so we'll, he'll be able to get that so if we get that with Dooku and then we uncover more of this grass around him so that we can see what's going on we still don't have a permanent nest so we'll see what Izanarko can find so if she moves into the grass and picks up a little bit more she's not really finding very much either so Adam can do the same, open out a little bit more of the territory there's not much uh, food around here either now you can find food in the water but you've got to be careful how far into the water you go there's fish and shells and things like that but we don't have any creatures that are particularly good at fishing and if the creatures go too far into the water they can drown there are also leeches that can attach themselves to your creatures which would then cause the bleeding effect which harms your creature every turn and we don't really want that so if we leave um, Eve where she is for a moment and move Coco out nearer to her sister so that she can actually have a little bit look around it doesn't seem like there's a permanent nest um, really close to here at the moment so if we hop Eve up next to this berry bush and then we can put um, one of our own nests down so that she can have her baby that she's been pregnant with for a couple of turns now and she can also sit next to the berry bush so that she can pick up the berries that are produced on that and we don't lose that food either so we'll move on to the next turn and she's had a son so his name is Taku 
and he again has the short sighted eyes so it seems like we might have to put um, normal eyes into a lot of these creatures gene pools once we start breeding them but he also has inherited his mother's nimble fingers so he can pick up quite a lot of um, berries and nuts like his brother now he actually has b and g and we know as we've stated before that a lot of his sisters have the a gene so he can actually breed to one of those since we have a lack of roaming creatures at the moment now what i like to do i always leave adam and eve with three um green gems because we know they're going to be partners but what i like to do with the other creatures is turn the gems combinations so that each breeding pair that I would like to breed together has the same combination. Obviously we can't do that with him right now because he's only a tiny baby so he doesn't have gems yet but once we once he's grown up a little and we've figured out which of um, the females we would like to breed him to, to I will turn his first gem and his new mate's first gem into a different colour so that we can always tell that they're supposed to breed. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the only creature I will breed those two to. If I find another good combination or I just want to do an experiment and see if something works then I will still breed them outside of the purring but it just shows me that if I need babies quickly and um, if we're attacked and we lose some creatures or anything like that I've already figured out some good purrings where I know the immunity genes match up so that helps me and um, we'll pick up some of this food and we'll have Eve dig because as we said before even though she can't do it that helps us towards unlocking those genes so we don't want her to immediately have another baby so it's okay if Adam moves away a little bit and picks up some of this grass to make our territory a lot bigger and we'll have Izanarko do the same and pick up some of this grass so that we can see more of the area now I don't want to move Duco away from the tree too much because at the moment he's next to the tree he can pick up the nuts but that doesn't stop him from moving around the tree and just opening up the area a little bit so that we can see what's going on. Now I think what we'll do with Coco is move her up here nearer to the grass and then we'll have another little bit of a sniff and another little bit of a listen and there doesn't seem to be much there's a lot of moles around actually and she's sat right behind one so that mole as you can see just about um it's in the tall grass but you can see that it's popped up from its burrow and it's facing away from her so she can actually slash at that mole which then leaves the meat in the mole nest and she can pick that up to get us some more food now that uses up all of our creatures turns so we'll skip the day on to the next day and that allows little Taku to move out of the nest and this is a bunny burrow so we've got a bunny popped up here but obviously Taku is too young to be able to get the bunny so we'll move him over. Now having a look at his genes um, we obviously don't want him to breed the short-sighted eyes so again we'll pop the normal eyes into one of his slots he's pretty good apart from that he's got normal blood clotting he's got high fertility he's got nimble fingers and runner leg um, I would like him to breed out his ram horns so if either of his sisters has ram horns in the um, recessive genes and they fit with his immunity genes then I would really like to breed him to them and the poison fangs as well so he's got B and G so if we look at his sisters she has A and G so we don't want to breed them together because of the G gene and she also has A and G so we don't want to breed them together either so actually he doesn't line up with either of his sisters perfectly so we might have to have Adam and Eve have another baby um, to be able to manage to get a mate for him just yet but there's still a possibility because there's all of this grass that we do have roaming creatures on the island it would be very strange if we didn't so if we have Eve hop back out of the nest and breed with Adam and then hop back into the nest again we might produce um, another little baby that might go with one of our other creatures and then 
we can have Dooku, we want him to stay close to the tree, but that, that bunny is here and it is within his reach. So if we actually hop him down and kill the bunny and pick up the meat, he can go back to his acorn collecting next turn, so that wouldn't, won't be too much of an issue. So we will have Coco carry on with her explanation and see if we can find any more wandering creatures, which it doesn't seem like they are very close. But it does sound like there's something rustling around, it could be a bunny or a mole, it could also be another creature, so it could also be a carnivore as well, so we do need to be careful that there are no carnivores popping out and attacking us when we don't expect it. But Adam has done his duty and produced another little earth, so for now he can open up some more of the grass so that we can see a little bit better, and there's another mole hill there. So if the mole doesn't turn and see him before the next turn, he might be able to get a mole next turn. So that's all of our creatures. I've used up all of their turns for this turn. So let's um, skip the day so that Eve can have her other baby. And there's um, one of the fish I was talking about. That is actually one of the harder fish to um, catch. That's one of the piranha fish and one of the shells down there. So. We didn't, wouldn't really want to go that deep into the water because that might be a little bit too deep for our creatures but one of them might be able to pick up the shell maybe a little Taku here because he has the nimble fingers he might be able to pick up that shell in a couple of turns time if it's still there so if we skip the day and he grows up a little bit more the mole hasn't run away so Adam should be able to get that so he's got um, another brother now Nunu Duke I think is how that's said. So Nunu Duke has really good eyes, he carries the recessive um, fangs, he carries the recessive big ears, he again has the two different paws which is good, we want to keep those in, and he has B and Star, so do any of his sisters line up with B and Star? Yes, yeah, so A and G and A and G, so both of the twins, so we want to see if either of the twins carries ram horns and poison fangs so that um, they could breed with little Nunu Duke here. So um, Izanako carries both and also has brilliant eyesight whereas her sister Coco does carry both but has the um, short eyes, the short sighted eyes in her recessive genes. So just for the sake of that, it's probably going to be better if Izanako is actually his mate. So we'll change her first gem over to orange, and as soon as he gets his first gem, uh, we'll change his first gem over to orange as well, so that we know we have decided that they are mates from now on. So we said we were going to move little Taku down into the water and pick up this shell. And he should be okay to just sit there because his head's out of the water, he's not really in that deep, we'll just have to uh, watch out for leeches, that there is a leech there so his mother might have to come and rescue him from that leech in um, a few turns. Now really I should have paid more attention to Adam first before I moved him because now the mole has seen Adam and gone back into its mole hole but never mind we won't worry too much about that. So that little um, horrible splat noise was the leech getting Taku I believe, yes it was. So he has a leech, so if we move his mother out of the nest just down to here and she can pick the leech off of him and we'll save her turn just in case another leech comes up and gets him um, a little bit later on. So his brother Dooku can pick up the acorns, he can also get the berries just because his mother's moved away and she's not in a position to get them right now and then he can move back to his tree. So we'll pick up the grass with Adam's last turn so that we can see more of our territory. How far can Izanako move into the grass? She can move into the grass up to here. So if we move her into the grass and then have a little listen and a smell around and it doesn't really make us notice anything apart from there's a mole over here. We don't want her to move too far away because we'd like her to be able to come back and use the nest with her new mate once he grows up. So we will just remove some of this grass with her so that the area is a little bit more open and instead we can use Coco, her sister, to go um, a little bit more exploring into the grass and we still haven't really found anything. It seems like this island uh, might be a little bit barer than I was expecting but we'll 
see what happens in a couple of turns. So Eve was okay with them. She didn't have to pick any more leeches off Taku here because he hasn't picked up another leech. So we might actually have her dig around in the seafloor. Um, she wasn't successful, but again, that will count towards us unlocking the platypus beak gene later on. And she actually only has two days left on her life. So what I might do next turn is have her and Adam just breed one more baby before they die, if Adam can. He has one day left, so he will be able to survive next turn and then sadly he is going to pass away. But obviously his children will be able to continue his legacy, so we don't really need to worry too much about that. But if he has one more baby with Eve before he passes away, that um, will make it a little bit, little bit more stable so that they have quite a few children while we're looking around for those roaming creatures. So before I move on to the next day, I think that's a fair length for our second video. Hopefully um, I've tried to mess around with the settings a little bit more so I've increased the intensity of the microphone and turned down the um, in-game music and the sound and the background audio of the in-game. So hopefully you were all able to hear me a little bit better um, this time round and the game wasn't drowning me out so much. So let me know if that's still being an issue and we'll try and solve it again next time. But for now, thank you for watching and see you all later.